how are these numbers so big? I mean, it's amazing. Thanks, thanks for having me. Um, I mean, the numbers are almost mind-boggling to understand how a company this big can grow this fast at this stage as we're reopening up. Um, I think it goes to the idea that maybe they just don't have much competition out there. Um, and the desire for people to you know, shop online is still very strong. Um, you know, but talking to the company uh, last night, I think one of the most amazing things going on here is the size and being able to do what they do and have so we call it the Kraken. They have so many tentacles all over the place. It's just kind of defying what we think we know about corporations. Um, the fact that you're seeing them grow so fast uh, in so many different areas um, with the size of the company. And it's just pretty amazing. I think it's one of the untold stories of Amazon is the culture Jeff Bezos and his team put together here. Um, like I said, kind of define what we what we think we know about corporations that they should slow down as they get this big. Yeah, I mean, and we understand the momentum, uh, Scott. You know, everything toward the end of last March, a year ago, especially in April and May around the country, got pretty much shut down, some for weeks, some still going on. Right. Amazon picked up a lot of new business. Everybody started ordering. I guess the question is, do we have any visibility onto the sustainability of these types of numbers? As we, quote, I hate the term, reopen, Will Amazon lose those customers or have we all just now realize, you know what? I'm not going to go to the grocery store for basic stuff. I'm just going to use my Prime account and get paper towels delivered to me every week. What's our visibility on Amazon? So one of the things I, I discussed with them last night is that, you know, the, the next day promise kind of slipped a little bit during the pandemic. But one of the key things that they're doing is building a tremendous amount of infrastructure. I mean, it's just, again, insane how much infrastructure they're building. Um, but that really, their goal ultimately is same day. Um, and when they, they think they're kind of the demand curve, they believe as they get faster and faster, their market opportunity grows. Um, and so I think that's one of their big, but they'll even say like, listen, it's in theory. Um, we believe that if we get the time down that we're going to be able to grow our market pretty quickly. Um, and you got to say it's, you know, it, almost instantaneously, if you order from Amazon in a lot of big metropolitan areas, their goal is to get you that stuff very, very quickly, almost getting rid of the need. And you know, one of the things that R5 Capital does is we do a lot of consumer research. And one of the things our consumer research suggests is that shopping for consumables is a have to do, not a want to do. Um, about 35% of the population says they really don't want to go to the store to buy things like toilet paper and, uh, and eggs. They'd rather have it delivered. Um, and that's maybe just a huge opportunity. Yeah. Right now, Amazon's Amazon's market share in that type of consumables is, you know, still probably mid-teens. So they have a, yeah. maybe not and, and a lot of their a lot of the stuff, as our viewers know, it defaults to subscribe and save. You know, you got to actually change the box so you don't just automatically get this stuff every week or every month. Scott, very quickly, do we buy the stock here at 3500 a share? And we think a lot of this is reflected. I mean, we certainly wouldn't be selling it. Um, you know, we, we wouldn't put new incremental money into Amazon, but, uh, you know, on a pullback, we saw a you know, significant pullback if you're nimble, uh, we'd say get in. Um, but, you know, right now at 3,500, we think a lot of it's reflected. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.